Welcome to WeConnect and thank you very much for joining us once again here on this program. We hear so much about the digital marketplace these days. We hear about uh, internet companies and sometimes if your mind boggles like mine does, we thought that we tried to get some more answers on this whole issue. My guest today is Mr. Param Parameshwaran. Now he is the chairman of Suleka.com. He's here in the city on a very brief visit and we were able to invite him onto the show to try to clear some of our very many doubts. Thank you so much for being here. Let me very quickly and right up front say Suleka.com, one of the leading internet companies in our country. What do you believe that you stand for? Well, I think we are about users or consumers. Mm and a way to allow them to interact and transact in this fast-moving environment of products, services, and prices, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. We try to make things easy for them so that they can fulfill their needs. But do you believe that internet companies are actually make it easy? I mean, there are times when you just kind of get bombarded with so much of stuff that you are left gaping. I think that's very true and you know you can describe that as information overload yes. or if I have the information should I act now, should I act later. So these are all many different questions and I think as we are in this mode today, confusion is a natural or an <laughs> instinctive uh, reaction. So uh, the job of course of a company like us is to make sure that the user is in control and to the extent that the user or the consumer wants complete control, we are able to afford that. But to the extent that they want suggestions or a way to make a decision, we are able to, we are, we are able to offer that. Right. And finally, if the user, let's say, is interested only in, let's say, a price-based decision, we are able to offer that. So it is you putting the consumer or the user in control, which is essentially our um, holy grail, if you may. Right. Uh, am I confusing this in my mind with uh, something that you call e-tailing? Is, um, is, uh, is that correct? You know, I think that it is useful to reflect on what are the choices in front of a consumer. Mm. E-tailing is more an industry term mm. and essentially depends on who you ask. E-tailing would be described as I go to a particular site, you know, I see some merchandise, I then place an order, use my credit card, and then have it shipped. But there are a lot of things that go before that and also after that. And I think it is important to understand that what we are talking about e-commerce, we view at Suleka that as a broader phenomenon. And the broader phenomenon starts with, you know, making sure that uh, I get my information, I do my comparisons, I then make my choice, which is, I may actually buy on the site by paying on Suleka.com and having Suleka manage the process by which the merchandise or the service gets delivered to me. Or I might say, okay, give me some, let's say a price break and let me lock it down on Suleka and then I myself will go to a vendor or a merchant and buy the product. So e-commerce needs to, for in our definition, and I think it helps the consumer to view it that way also, encompasses these steps in the process. It's not just the act of paying through credit card on a site, which is often what it is confused with. Right. Uh, but having said that, uh, do you see a huge, huge future for this, for what you are doing, what your company is doing, precisely what you're doing in the, our Indian environment? I see an enormous potential. There's been a 400% increase over the years or what? Am I right? No, there's been, uh, Even more? I mean, depends on 400% of what. But I think that uh, we have had consumers in large numbers, mm -hmm. you know, preparing to go online, whether they look for information or whether they use the information to transact, whichever dimension you look at, all of these are enjoying explosive growth. There are certain Im impediments to, you know, sort of taking the transaction from the start to the finish. What are those? You know, for example, there may be people who are not comfortable with payment methods that are there. There may be people which you alluded to at the outset of uh, your question, which is, is there an information overload? Help me decide, right? I mean, that is an impediment to me transacting. And there are these, and what is happening now, and we can see that on our site, and that's what we promote on our, on our company, which is the use of social media, for example. You know, as I mentioned to you, the way we treat that, uh, that impediment is to say, let us provide you with some sharing of information. Let us allow you to share your questions, your information with others who are there on our site. 
and let us also give you some context in which those consumers are sharing that information. Right. And then that helps make a decision. Right. But not so long ago, Suleka.com was very, very into, into the, the, the social angles that you're talking about here. But you have, in the recent past, in the past few years, probably moved more into, you know, providing services, providing other kind of, uh, the, the kind of thing we're talking about here, about just trading online, buying, selling online. So what really forced you or what really kind of inspired you as a company to actually move in this Our direction? Our consumers and users did that. Really? Because what we found was that they were coming to our our company, our site, mm -hmm. whether it's through the mobile platform or our online platform, they were coming to our site and after they engaged in whatever they wanted to talk to others who were also on the site, they were looking for recommendations of what to buy, assuming that they had a certain need, let's say for a car, what car to buy, how to buy it, where do they go, etc., etc. And we thought, given that kind of interaction, it would be a natural for us to extend what we were providing with reliable information on merchants, vendors, etc., and an easy way for these consumers to get to what they need. So we started with the process of, let's say, getting the consumers the power to say, if I need a particular car or a service, get a few vendors to call me and then understand from me what my service is and bid for my services. So that, is, that was the next evolution that we had. Then, so, and we have a very, very vibrant, thriving business around that. Now, the next evolution was also a simple one, again, demanded by our consumers and users, which was, they said, well, there's a particular merchant I would like to do business with, but we trust you. We don't know that merchant. Why don't you take the responsibility? So you become, in fact, the middleman, really. Yeah, well, we become the enabler, right? Middleman is somebody who may not take the responsibility. They just put you in okay. touch with others. Right, right. But we go one step further because people are doing business with us because of their trust in us. Mm -hmm. So we must safeguard that trust. So we become enablers of uh, the transaction as well as we safeguard the trust that the consumer has reposed in us. Right. You have for long had a very distinct focus on the North American market. And uh, then, of course, you've shifted. What, how then are you coping with this? Because my specific question would be, in terms of the, you know, the North American market, you have a, a Craigslist, you have Google, you have so many of the other uh, providers to deal with. So now, how does that relate to what you're doing in India? Well, I think that overall, you know, our commitment is to Indians worldwide. Mm. You know, we are about connections. I mean, you know, I think that people all over, Indians in particular, they are very mob mobile, they move around, they have needs all over. Folks in the U.S., for example, they have need to buy property in India. Yes. Or they, have, they come on visits to India, or they have family who they would like to take care of. So I think we were about connected uh, uh, Indians, and therefore it made sense not just the U.S., North America, but also other pockets where there are Indians. But essentially over the last five years, our main operations have been in India. Right. And so we are about 1,400 employees and right. 10 offices in India, and it's a very, very widespread right. organization. So I'm going to ask you to hang on for just a very short sure. while. We'll take a very quick break here on WeConnect, and we'll be right back with you. Please don't go anywhere. Let me try this in. For us, it's different. I accept it. But you enjoy it. Coincidence It was funny. Who said I don't have a baby? Yes! 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 Chicken and 
first time I'm ordering my food using an iPad. Spicy barbecue chicken, I tried to try it, but it was spicy, I tried to try it. Menu card, Suvagi Teddy Urupaganam, Tingle Mudal, Yai Rivera, Dinam Pirpakal, Yerandu Maniku. Welcome back to We Connect. Thank you very much for joining us once again on our program. I'm talking here with Mr. Param Parameshwar and he's the chairman of Suleka.com. This is beginning to be very interesting because we're talking here about how you and I have to deal with the internet and the way sometimes our minds boggle. But I think he's clarifying that for us. Thank you so much for not going anywhere, for staying right here with me. Pleasure now, here. you were talking just now, before we went in for that break, about uh, how you are actually looking at the Indian community that for, you know, wants to sort of do stuff in India and how you can actually be that enabler, to use your own phrase. Uh, but does that not limit you in a certain way? Because Sulika.com then becomes very community specific. Well, we have a huge even by being amidst Indians, I think we have enormous potential. And it's there are so many of, of us. Exactly. <laughs> There's so many of us. We're just getting online. We're discovering uh, what, it, what it means to be online, how we can. In fact, the byline for our company is delightful discoveries. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are about. And so there is enormous potential that we see. And you can also see that. I mean, you know, you, you said so many yes. e-commerce organizations out here, more than five, six hundred million dollars have been invested in all these kinds of commerce entities in this last year. Mm. So it is not restricting uh, at all. You know, if you look at the statistics, you know, we have, uh, uh, the estimate was that we were at around eight billion dollars of products and services this last year. It's likely to go up to 25 billion dollars on the, um, you know, uh, internet platform wow, itself. That's a so lot. That's a huge, that's a huge amount, yeah. yes. And that's just scraping the surface because you know, it's not that offline is going to go away, but I think that is increasing discovery of the joys of online shopping, discovering the information, discovering the right decision. And I think there is also this notion that there are going to be hybrid models where both offline and online are involved. So when you take that and when you take our large numbers, Right. We are not restricting right. ourselves okay. in any way. You've just taken the words out of my mouth because I was going to ask you about uh, offline and does it mean that this is eventually the death knell for, for, for you know, your trader no, down the street? No, not at all. No? Not at all. Not at all. I think, and again, I, I, I invite you to uh, refer back to what I was saying about how we conceive of this. For us, it is about commerce enablement. So, for example, you take a consumer. Now, the consumer might be interested in just getting information. Suleika is there to provide that. The consumer might be interested in getting, to getting in touch with a few vendors or suppliers of what he or she wants as a product or a service. You can get that. Third might be the consumer might decide, hey, I need to lock down this particular price. I find this attractive. The feature is attractive. Let me lock it down. So they may make a token payment on our site or if she's on a mobile, right away on mm. the mobile, and then use some instruction or device or information that she gets to go to the physical location of the merchant or service. Yeah. So that is also possible, and that's also what we enable. And finally, there is this more traditional description of e-commerce, which is you pay on the site and you have it delivered. You have no interaction with the offline world, so that's one. You cannot, I mean, in our minds, and that informs our strategy also, you cannot predict which one will be the biggest size or how it will behave, especially in a dynamic environment, dynamic country like ours. And therefore, we feel that by offering this entire range, it makes a whole lot of sense because then you're allowing the consumer's comfort or desires or, or, or a way of uh, interacting to dictate how. So if you believe this premise, then you won't worry about the fact that it's a death knell because the full, the, the only one piece of this is actually ordering on site and then, you know, getting it at your doorstep. The other pieces still involve 
interactions with the offline world. And there are certain things which will never go away. Like the, the fun of going to a somewhere yes, and actually absolutely. viewing something. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> right. absolutely. I want to ask you one thing. Yeah. In terms of uh, this offline and online debate, in a way, um, in India, where do we sort of rank with the rest of the world? I mean, you know, uh, overseas you just see the people never ever do very, very little, seldom offline. And we tend to still do a fair, fair amount offline. So I'm just wondering, in relation to the rest of the world, where do we stand? E Jennifer, even in the in U.S. and other advanced mm -hmm. countries, offline does still continues to represent the majority of commerce transactions. Truly, yes, yes. But but online has grown far more rapidly, or and has a greater presence than, for example, it has a, in India. And I think here we are born from a comfort of dealing offline, dealing with people. True. And so we don't see that uh, going away. We see, again, you know, enabling devices. So as you walk into a mall, for example, and if you are a Suleka member, and if Suleka is able to provide you with an idea of which ones are on sale in that mall, or which are the new product arrivals in that mall, then I have helped you uh, engage in that transaction. These are the kinds of things which we feel that the consumer would be interested in, interested in. So our proportion in terms of online in the traditional definition is far lower than what is there in, el, uh, uh, elsewhere in the world. But I think in terms of actionable information that we seek to get from the online world, or including on my mobile, I think that's getting up there. Uh, we in, co in comparison, in compares favorably with other people, other nations. Right. How do governments actually view uh, companies like yours, for instance? And I'm talking about, uh, you know, this online thing, because really it's, it's a cut in ta taxes and stuff like that, isn't it, for a government? Uh, not really. You know, we pay service taxes, and uh, service tax is a big, big chunk of, uh, uh, you know, our, our, uh, in our expenses and so on. So the government taxes us. You know, uh, so you take care of so, that, is it? Yeah, but maybe. you pass it on to me. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> I think that we are, uh, again, you know, since we provide and enable services, mm -hmm. we don't have this passing on to the consumer. We work with the merchant. Most of our services for the consumer are free. We never pass on that. We work with the merchant who is actually interested in actually acquiring or having another you as a customer. Right. So when, when that happens, that merchant has a budget for that that kind of activity. So we work with the merchant, make it useful for that merchant, and al that allows the merchant to share some of the revenues with right. us. Right. Uh, it's time once again for us to take a very short break. I'm going sure. to come back to you. Sure. And when we come back, we want to talk to our guest about where his future plans lie and some little bit about him on a personal level. So don't go anywhere. Catch all the action. Only on the big pitch with me, Paloma. Yadir Parada Nigger. Bulagatin lifestyle. Brahmi puttum, thodil nutpangal. Tere ko laga anu bavangal. Ungal varavir paragil, bulagam nirtam. Three sixty, bulagai chutri, tingal mudal, sunny varai. Malay Aintum for the Maniku Ungal NDTV Hindu Welcome back to We Connect. My guest here is Mr. Param Parameshwar, and he's the chairman of Suleka.com. And we've been having this discussion with him, which I'm going to be continuing 
about the way you and I deal with the internet and some of the information we get there and a few of the other things. So thank you very much once again. Uh, now I decide to get something on the internet and when I see that credit card number that they want I am terrified and I'm horrified that somebody's going to get into my information, information is going to go out from, you know, from the portal that I'm actually using. So that is of great concern. Uh, I think you have less reasons to be concerned than you think because what's, you know, the internet today is, is much, much safer than handing your credit card to a restaurant that you didn't know before. You're discovering that and you hand it out over to a waiter and he or she, or he, you know, they, yeah. they process that. I think it is much safer than that. There are sufficient technologies out there. You must make sure, of course, that there are certain techniques to make sure that it is safe. For example, as you make the payment in the address bar, you'll see HTTPS. You need to make sure you see that S, and it's not just HTTP. What's are, the S for? The S is for secure. Oh, okay. And there are other things like verif verified sign, etc. Very sign is a company that certifies. Right. So there are certain things to look out for. But other than that, there are, of course, in, in our country, as we are increasing the amount of transactions here and reaching more and more people, especially in tier two, tier three towns, where a lot of the action is, they may not have as much yes. access yes. as we do in tier mm -hmm. one. And therefore, we are seeing a lot of action from those kinds of users on our site. And so for them, you know, even, even this is a little too complex. They would like to have the simplicity of cash. And so we are seeing a surge in COD type transactions, mm -hmm. cash on delivery type transactions. Of course, there is a certain cost to that that the industry has not yet figured out how to minimize because there are 30, 40% returns that happen on CODs with consumers refusing. Mm -hmm. And that's a cost that companies can ill afford to bear. So there are certain other innovations that have now come up, for example, cash before delivery. There's a concept of cash before the courier goes out to uh, deliver. I think that they make sure that a cash transaction happens or card on delivery. If you happen to have a card, then you can see face to face who is doing it and, and do that. And mobile payments are also emerging. In fact, these COD and related options are now probably 40%, uh, 30 to 40% of the total transactions that are being done. Right. Is Suleka.com actually going in that direction? Yes, we have that today. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. As I said, you know, ours is a broader range of services. It's not just about collecting yes. payments because that's a sliver of uh, our what? commerce enablement. Today, we enable more than, I would say, $400 million of commerce on our site today. Right. Only a small sliver of that is actually people paying and getting products and services as a whole. The rest of it is actually enablement, like buying of coupons, locking down, going to... However, for all of this, I am providing very uh, detailed personal information. Indeed. How can you guarantee me that, and viewers who are listening, uh, of the uh, security and the safety of that information that I'm feeding to That's you? That's a very, very important question. Uh, and I think, you know, consumers have to be watchful about that. And that is why we emphasize the word trust. I think our intent is to become a trustworthy organization. Trust not only in helping you make the right decision, Trust not only in terms of making sure that if a vendor does not, uh, you know, do the needful, that we are there to protect you. We are there to process the refunds or we are there for redress. And trust also in terms of uh, world-class systems, security systems to protect your information. So we have internal very strict procedures that are protecting your information. We don't sell it. We don't give it to a third party. We just maintain it exclusively for the purposes for which you gave us. Right. Going forward, where do you see Suleka.com? We see more of the same. You know, we are a digital, we are a conglomeration of digital marketplaces. You know, home needs, office needs, travel, uh, lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. It's a series of marketplaces that we have. And that aggregation is what Suleka is about. So we see an expansion of those marketplaces. We see integrated ways in which consumers can come, whether they are today for lifestyle needs, tomorrow for home needs, day after tomorrow to buy a car, to buy a used car, because people post used cars on our site. You can take a test drive. You can book a test drive for a new car on our site. So this range of marketplaces that we have, we will be expanding them. And within each marketplace, we will be providing the best set of information as well as products and services for people 
to buy. And that's, that's our idea. Now, uh, over the years, uh, Suleka.com has had some rather outstanding advertisements and some very, very hugely successful campaigns. Yes. Now, would you credit some of the success of, of your organization to the advertising campaigns? Would you, would you actually be able to put a finger on it? Absolutely. It's, uh, I think that our advertising campaigns have been innovative. Some of them, by the way, have actually been put together by our users themselves. I know, themselves. I, I, I know that. You know, yes. they post, they make these ads and they post well, them. You can and do then everything on Solicit. Yes, exactly. Except having a baby. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That one, yes. So we have run with those kinds of mm. uh, uh, things as well. Right now, we are have a campaign which is, you know, everything at your fingertips. So yeah. we are reducing everything to your fingertips, as well as our campaign now focuses on how do how can we get you to discover you know, the delights that exist in the real world out there through the Suleka platform. So we are enabling delightful discoveries. These are all campaigns that have been quite, you know, are, are quite successful. We had a very successful campaign using Arjuna, yeah. um, you know, as a character yes, right. and a series of animations. And the interesting thing there, we combined it with our corporate social responsibility there because we made these pathas from a village which has a thousand year old tradition in Orissa. Yes. And they make these, uh, they make these carvings on leaves. Mm -hmm. And we put that together as a story and then we animated it. And that won a Khan, uh, an award at the Khan. It's I think it won the bronze, I think. Bronze, bronze yes. yes. And so it was, it, was, it was very exciting. And now because of social media, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all of which we are very active in, um, I think we get a lot of viral uh, attention. Right, that. indeed. So they yeah. have played a, a, a good role in that. And now in 04, when that tsunami hit our shores, uh, I know that the employees of your company got together and, uh, you know, really donated a huge, huge, huge sum of money, yes. many million dollars. Yes. Now, uh, are you actually focusing a lot on com uh, corporate social responsibilities? What are the other things that you might be doing that you'd like well, to tell me about? Let me say in the tsunami case, it was not just the employees of Suleka because we were able to use our entire platform and get our co users to contribute. So we put together challenge funds. Suleka employees stepped up, but they were ultimately a very small part. We were just overwhelmed by people all over the world coming to the site and donating ten dollars fifty rupees hundred rupees we also put together a matching fund right. and it was incredible to see the kind of generosity so it was there. purely because you have already so many users yes. of so yes. suleka.com yes and we have 21 million visits a month that that's that's an amazing number isn't and it I think yes that touched a chord in people yes and so that, it was incredible to see, and you could see every minute right, right. five more contributions I know, I are believe, coming. Yes, I so understand that. So, so we intend to continue with, with that. We so have a whole donation platform, you know, which is a part of our corporate responsibility, which we allow not-for-profits to also, on a permission basis with our users, to be able to donate. Right. To so that's a huge and a very um, delightfully happy note to end this interview on. I'd like to thank you very much. And of course, before I let you go, I do need to say that I'm going to let you go so that you can go back to those half marathons that you keep competing in. Yes, right? yes, yes. <laughs> are, I wish I would do more of them. <laughs> and so I'll get back to doing well, more of well, them. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Parmesan. Thank for you time. very much. I Jennifer. really do appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Well, that's all we have time for here on WeConnect. And we do hope that you've enjoyed listening to Mr. Parmeshwan because I think he's had a lot of very interesting things to tell us. And so until the next time, next weekend, when I'll meet you again, you take care. Bye for now.